They found my ad. I actually auditioned them. <laughs> they don't know it. Just act normal. Okay. <laughs> That's my normal face. Yeah. And if nobody believes you, here's the Mars face. There's the Mars face. Their albums for Electra Asylum sell millions and they're one of the top ten grossing concert bands this year. Their albums include songs like Bastard, quote, Out goes the light, in goes my knife, pull out his life, consider that bastard dead. Live Wire, quote, I'll either break her face or take down her legs, get my ways at will. Go for the throat, never let loose, going in for the kill. And too young to fall in love. Not a woman, but a whore. I can taste the hate. Well, now I'm killing you. Watch your face turning blue. How did you guys ever come up with the name Motley Crue? Was that part of your biz? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you remember what happened? Harry came in and we were rehearsing and he looked around and he goes, this is certainly a Motley looking crew. So, yeah. that was it. Did you ever realize that the original name of White Horse was Motley Crue? After, let me, I think you told me. Yeah. Yeah. That was our first name. It was Fat City, Motley Crue, White and Horse. White Horse. <laughs>
Dave plays guitar is so unique compared to anybody else. I mean, everybody, in my opinion, as far as guitar players, not everybody, but most guitarists there play too fast, and they're always concerned with, with showing off, and Mick uh, puts his ego in the back seat and plays good music all the time. Melodic, memorable leads and stuff. And stuff. Kind of a raw, 
a raw sound yeah. considering the 80s, you know, and, and especially what the 80s became. That's my favorite personally out of uh, the Motley Crue catalog. I like the other albums as well, but um, that was the one that really kind of just hit me yeah. in the face. <laughs> I didn't like any of the songs on that album. Actually, I had a really rough time. And every time that I would come up with a part, it was always wrong. And I always got criticized and my, my self-confidence went way, 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 way down. I'm still a little, it still, still eats at me. It still, it still does. Even when I go into, when I play on, when I play on live, when I'm recording a new record and everything else, I still have that self-doubt from that. That was, that album fucked me up a lot. And so did the producer.
out of sin, and I was shocked. That's when I really saw the illness really starting to take hold in him. And Alan Kovac had said, you know, I'll help you, but you have to let me help you. Things started to move forward because Alan contacted the doctors and the specialists and started everything in motion so Mick could get the information for him to make a decision on whether or not he wanted to do this. Okay, so Mick couldn't be here. Mick hasn't let anybody see him. He's really, his health is beyond deteriorated. He's 103 pounds. Anybody got a picture of him? Is he alive? He's depressed, beyond depressed. He's so, you know, so thin and frail, and and he's um, sort of pulled into himself. And well, you know, Mick, Mick hates, hates everything and every doctor and every. Yeah. He's not going to go. I've been trying to get him to go to a doctor for five years, you know, to go see a specialist, and he has always felt like he's beyond hope, and I don't think that's the case. been a lot of organic illness that needs to be addressed. And he also said that, you know, some of the medicines he's been on for pain really made him feel schizophrenic was the word that he used. Um, and he's, you know, he's been honest about that with us, too. I and uh, my, my, my heart really goes out to him. When he has very severe ankylosing spondylitis, his neck is totally fused. His thoracic spine is totally fused. And his hips are gone. I mean, if he was otherwise healthy, benefit greatly from, you know, replacing his hips. The question is how do, where do we, and how do we proceed? I was tripping, man. I was like, whoa. Fuck, he's really skinny. Like, like, it scared me. Like, you know, I, you know, started shaking a little bit. What's well, cracking, bud? My neck. My neck. Yeah. How are you, man? I'm all right. Yeah? Tommy was freaked out. We had a little kind of damp eye, you know? I was like, wow, you know, it's really bizarre to see my friend like this. You know, I didn't really know it was that bad. When I saw him for the first time, it was like, wow, Mick looks very frail. You know, and just like if you touched him, he'd break and put a lot of doubt in my mind for the day. Ankylosing spondylitis works on your spine, but it doesn't work on the back side of your spine. It works on the inside. So when you get the disease, you come from straight to being bent. It pulls you forward like this. And I felt like Quasimodo, like a hunchback. And it was a, an embarrassment for me. To help me get through the pain of the disease that I have, I've started taking opiates. I became dependent on them. It turned into an addiction. And I started eating like 18 to 20 a day. I didn't drink or anything, but I shrunk down to about 98 pounds. I was screaming for somebody to help me, and there was nobody coming. And so I was stuck in this. 5,500 square foot house by myself, <laughs> slowly like dying. And I kind of guess I had a death wish because I didn't really care anymore. I didn't have anything to do and I didn't want to tour and I was tired. And I was tired, run down and just like beat the crap. And finally, uh, I went to a doctor and he goes, you're gonna die in a couple of days if you don't go into the hospital. I said, okay, and you can get me a bed in the hospital. There was talk of reuniting and retouring and stuff like that, but uh, I, I was like apprehensive. I just looked at Nikki and I was like, bro, is he gonna be able to do this? You know, he can barely get from there to there right now. And I'm like, man, I, I don't know if, you know, this is great to do some photo sessions, but I was like, man, I don't know if we can do a tour. I'm kind of still a little bit apprehensive on how the uh, Motley Crue fans are gonna see me. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Mick 
How are you feeling, dude? Are you gonna about curl this? I'm gonna kick your fucking ass, I'll tell you that. Oh. Mick did it. He did it. He, he forced himself to get stronger. It just seemed to get stronger and stronger. That's that's cool. So that really gives me a lot of hope for Mick. Maybe in some roundabout way, you know, maybe we've saved his life or we've, you know, added some years onto it. I never wanted sympathy at all, ever, 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 ever. I think people are questioning me if I'm going to make it. Watch me. Thank you.